The following is a hoop ball presentation. What's up, Grizz Nation? This is Hoop Ball Grizz. I'm your host, David Williams. Got with me today, as always, my co-host, Mr. Sam Bruski. What's up, Sam? Oh, not much. How are you doing? I'm good. Good deal. We are coming to you fresh off of the Grizzlies versus Lakers game. Interesting game. So it, sad. It was a very good game. I will, Obviously, I would love to see a win, but the young Grizzlies team taking a championship contender right to the wire, giving them all that they wanted last night. It was it was great. It was. It, it's the first time all season that Ja and Jaron both scored 20 points. I like that they played well together in this game. Not that they've played bad, but it's been a lot of Ja has had a good game and Jaron didn't play well, or Jaron blew up and Ja had a bad game. We have yet to see them both play well at the same time, and it happened tonight. They they both had a pretty good game against, you know, the record-wise, the best team in the NBA. I talked about in the last cast the the three key things, that like the three keys to victory, and one of the main things that I talked about was Jaron Jackson staying on the floor and out of foul trouble. He managed to do that. Played well. He played... 33, 34 minutes, and had two fouls. He was almost at 34 minutes. Yeah. Against some of the, well, not some of the, but like Anthony Davis is one of the best bigs in the league. He he competed with him, played well on the defensive end. You could see plays that uh, that Jaron made. There was one play in particular at the end of the game where Anthony Davis caught the ball and he was going toward the basket, and Jaron contested, but he didn't. He wasn't aggressively trying to block the shot, and I think that that's kind of the the maturity thing that you need to see from him. That's something you have to see Jaron get. You can contest a shot without necessarily swinging to try to block it and that's where some of his stupid fouls like the the dumb stuff the easy fouls that he could avoid you would see him swinging and if he goes straight up and he can test the shot they still make it okay you played defense you made it tough on them there's sometimes that you you want to see that aggression. You want to see the the swing, the try and swat it out four rows and in deep into the crowd. But there's other times when you want to see him be smart and stay in the game, stay on the floor. And that's what he, that's exactly what he done last night. Playing it was almost 34, just under 34 minutes, mm-hmm. nearly double what he played in the last Lakers game. He yep. was on the. Go ahead. Yeah, he. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. It was it was double what he played almost. He yeah. looked and he looked great. He did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was what twenty. I had his stats. He has. Uh, tw- he had twenty points and seven rebounds, two steals and a block. And he shot eight for sixteen, so fifty percent as well. So yeah, four or seven from from deep. Yes. Yeah. He. Uh, the Grizzlies were shooting the lights out in the first half. They started 7 for 7 from deep. Mm-hmm. Ended up shooting 10 for 14 in the first half. Didn't do so well in the second half on threes. They they were 10 for 14. It was like uh 71% mm-hmm. in the first half. And then they they finished the game. She they shot 4 for 16 in the second half, which is 25%. And, and that's a that's a tough fall, but you can't expect a team to shoot 70% from three for a whole game. That's just Unless unheard it's of. the Warriors from last year. Well, <laughs> even then, I, I don't obviously have all of their stats right here in front of me because well, I, I, I just I loathe less, them. But. but I would be willing to bet you that the Warriors, if they had a game where they shot 70% from three, it couldn't have been more than one. 70% from three for an entire game is just... That's 2K numbers right there. <laughs> it's, it is. It's video game numbers. Um, but they did that. The the Grizzlies, they had some good games from guys that you need big games from against a team like the Lakers, a, a championship caliber team 
LeBron James, Anthony Davis, just if if you follow basketball at all, you know what's expected of the Lakers this year. LeBron had an off year last year. He didn't make the playoffs. And I'm you know what? Off year is stupid. LeBron James averaged like twenty eight, eight and eight last year. That's a ridiculous insane, year. Insane insane numbers for as old as he is. <laughs> right. But because he didn't make the playoffs. It's an off year. It's an off year. Yeah. He seems like he is hungry this year. Yeah. I he has something to prove. And he's one of the best ever. He just is. Um, I'm not going to talk about LeBron. This isn't a Lakers podcast. But I was – well, I don't I don't have the, the words for it because I don't think satisfied gives it justice as to the things I saw from the young Grizzlies team. Uh, we'll run through the the stats. What was it? It was one hundred nine to one hundred eight. Yep, one on Lakers one hundred nine, Grizz one hundred eight. So Jay Crowder was four for nine from three last night. He had twenty one points, six rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block. Played very well. Like to see your veteran guys step it up. And Jay Crowder knows when the moment's big. He's been in the league long enough. He steps up in big moments. It's just what he does. Well, he hit a game winner this year. Yep. Bingo. Yep. Against the Nets. That mm-hmm. was fantastic. Uh, Jaron Jackson, 20 points, seven rebounds, two steals and a block, four for seven from three. Dylan Brooks, he only had 12 points. He had 12 points, three rebounds, three assists. He was three for five from three. Numbers-wise, it doesn't look good, but Dylan didn't really have an awful game. It, it's not like he was invisible. He had decent numbers, but just not spectacular. Mm-hmm. Ja Morant had 26 points, three rebounds, six assists, and five steals. For first time that a rookie has had 20 points, five assists, and five steals since who, Sam? Come on. You know- oh, I don't. Goodness. Sam, Sam's going to be upset when he hears his answer. I am going to be upset. Hey, Russell one, Westbrook. False, sir. It's one of your favorite players. Kobe Bryant. Nikola Jokic. <laughs> Sam is I'm terrible. I'm going to kick myself. Yeah, I'm going to kick Sam's myself. Sam's terrible at this game. So the first time that a rookie point guard has had 20 points, five assists, and five steals since John Wall. Oh, that's a. I just thought I was just running. I was running point guards through my head. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, John's not on my head this year because he's big. Yeah, he, he's, he is. He's uh, on the shelf for like 20 years. He is setting it out. So, Ja had a, a spectacular game. It, it's. I, I was watching on Twitter, and one of the um, one of the play by play guys for the Grizzlies, he tweeted. Um, Ja just done something amazing. And then later on, he tweeted again. He's like, you know, I'm going to go back and just pin that tweet so I don't have to keep tweeting that because it happens every (sighs) single game. It's almost to the point where, as a Grizzlies fan, you just expect it. Mm -hmm. Not that it's any less spectacular whenever it does happen, but you go to the game or you watch the game on TV and you're like, all right, what is Ja going to do tonight? What kind of jaw-dropping, just highlight reel, what are we going to see from him tonight? That's just the kind of player he is. He he plays fast. He attacks the rim. And, man, it, it's it's super, super exciting to watch. I was waiting on him to dunk on LeBron James. <laughs> I was waiting on it. I wanted it to happen, but it didn't. But that's okay because we got two more games left, so. Yeah, I'm more than anything. Like, if he dunks on LeBron, okay, that that's fine. No, it's great. But <laughs> I have an intense dislike for Dwight Howard. Oh boy, yeah, you need to dunk on both of them. <laughs> I I would love it if he just like posterized Dwight Howard, like Kobe did back like, in the day. Like ended his career. Yeah, yeah. just just like the the. Uh, a replay, a playback of the Kobe dunking on Dwight. Sat on his shoulders. That that would, <laughs> man, that would make my year. Yes. If the Grizzlies didn't win another game all year long, 
and Ja Morant post rises Dwight Howard. I am a happy man. I'd lay in the floor the whole night after that. It was just <laughs> floor passed out, done. All right, we we digress. I apologize. So we'll go back. Uh, stat lines. Ja had a great game. 20, 26 points, three rebounds, six assists, five steals. He was ten for sixteen from the field. Uh, I think he only shot two threes, and that's okay. You know, that's I think a lot of times the the game is evolving where the three ball is where it's at. Like teams are shooting threes at a higher rate than they have ever in the NBA. But you don't have to have the three in your arsenal. You don't have to shoot a lot of them every game in order to be effective in the NBA. The MVP from last year did not make that many threes. A mid-range jumper, attacking the rim, being a playmaker. The three is good. You need it in your arsenal because you don't want to be a one-dimensional guy a la Ben Simmons. You know, he made his first career three. There was a whole big thing about it. And they should drug test him. <laughs> drug test Ben Simmons because he made a three. It's insane. They need to test what's in the water over there. I have a an issue with all of the hype that that's getting. I'm yeah. glad that Ben Simmons is trying to evolve his game. Me too. Because in the playoffs, teams just play off of him. They play yep. back. And they're like, you're not driving to the rim. If you're going to beat us, you're going to have to shooting. shoot that mid range jumper or you're going to have to shoot that three. And it really handcuffs his other teammates. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that Ben Simmons is trying to change his game. But that's what you do as an NBA player. That's You make adjustments. If you get to the NBA and you think you're just going to rest on your laurels and you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to sit back here and do what I've always done, you're going to be in a world of trouble. This is the best of the best. You have to make adjustments. I'm I'm not a huge fan of making a big deal out of what Ben Simmons is doing right now. I'm glad he's making the adjustments. Um, I don't think it's a big deal. He is a point guard in the NBA. You need to be able to shoot that. Oh, you yeah. do. I'll agree. So, but, I mean, if he can start knocking it down consistently instead of he's like, what, one for 500 or something? Not, not that but, bad, but you know what no, I mean. He, he hadn't shot that many. No, he hasn't. Yeah. But, I mean, he's he shot – I've seen him shoot a few, and he's never – Yeah. obviously he made that one. But, I mean, if he can consistently start doing that, I mean, that would be – that'd be something to talk oh, it's, about it's, then. It's game-changing. Oh, absolutely. That's – he goes from being an elite player in the NBA to being talked about at, you know, the, the, the upper echelon of players. There's other things that he has to work on, but if he develops the three – because of the way that he, you know, his ability to to drive to the basket, to create his own shot, it makes him very, very tough to guard. And there, there's obviously drives me nuts whenever a guard in the NBA can't shoot eighty percent from the free throw line. I've talked about my love for free throws. Oh my goodness! I'm I'm, I'm not going to go into it, but there's centers out there. Not all of them, but some of them shoot better than that. Yeah. If you're a guard in the NBA and you're shooting less than 80% from the free throw line. Trash. I'm not a fan. Nope. Drew Holiday, not a fan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. Brandon Clark had another decent game. He continues to shoot at a ridiculous percent from the field. He was 57% from the field last night. Eight points, 11 rebounds, uh, two assists, and a steal. Uh, Kyle Anderson probably had the play of the game. Uh, well, okay, Ja Moran had the play of the game. Obviously, Ja tends to do that every game. But oh, uh, slow-mo's coming down the floor, driving to the basket, and just, like, drops a pass back to Jay Crowder. Oh, like, over just behind his head. No look behind <laughs> his head. And it was... That was gnarly. Man, that was good. I I went bonkers. I was I just wasn't expecting it. Kyle Anderson's nickname Slow Mo. I see where he gets it from. When you watch him play in in real life, when you watch him play on the TV, it does kind of look like he's going in slow motion. Mm -hmm. But his basketball IQ, I, he just doesn't get enough credit. I feel like he is underrated honestly he great playmaker I, I like kyle anderson big, big fan of kyle anderson so 
Uh, but he he had 11 points, six rebounds, four assists, a steal on a block. The the Grizzlies overall just played very well, but couldn't seem to to get it done. There was one thing Sam wanted to kind of bring up toward the end of the game, and I will go ahead and lead off with I 100% agree with his take on this, <laughs> but I'm going to let him tell you what he's wanting to talk about. Well, there was a call at the end. It was Caldwell Pope, right? Am I right on that one? He was the one, sh- well, yeah, technically KCB. shooting. Mm-hmm. Ja went up to block. Ja was right in front of him, went straight up, had his back towards him at one point, and he landed – and then Caldwell Pope bumped into him and then shot the shot, and they called a foul on Ja. And it's like, that's not right. Even the commentators, Brevin was even like, no, that's not right. And it's not. Mm. It's not right. Bre- Brevin was livid. Oh, he was. He, he, he was. <sighs> that is an awful call. And the reason being, when when KCP, like he pump fake, Ja jumps up, and as Ja's coming down, he's kind of turning his back. Well, at the point that Ja Ja had almost landed, his feet were almost on the floor, and then KCP jumps forward into Into Ja Morant. And they had the rule. I call it the Zaza Pachulia rule. And it is where a a defender cannot be in the landing space of the shooter. They call a foul because of... Um, the Warrior Spurs series when, when they killed Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. I feel like the defenders need that same respect. As far as I know, if you got the ball, like the focus is on you. But the way that KCP made that move, it wasn't natural. You're not going to jump forward. You're not jumping the way that. He kind of he didn't even jump. He leaned forward into him while he was like he was touching the ground at basically, and he ran yeah. his elbows into him, and boom, there's a foul. It's like come on, yeah. Good and they call it they call it a three at first, and I'm like they have got to go. They have to watch this. There's yeah. no way, and they they fix that. He only shot two free throws. The Grizzlies at the time that this play happened had momentum, mm-hmm. and I feel like that was a changing point in the game. Obviously, there's not one thing in a game like this that wins or loses the game. The Grizzlies had a ton of turnovers. I think they had 19 turnovers in this game. And I know at one point the Lakers had 25 points off of turnovers. Something I don't, like that, yeah, yeah. It was close. I don't know close. what they ended up finishing with, but y- you can't turn the ball over that many times. So this play didn't make or break the game, but it was a big turning point. Grizzlies had momentum. This foul gets called. And he goes up there, he sinks the two free throws, you move on. There's gonna there's gonna be questionable calls. There there just it happens every game. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that the NBA should take a look and be like, okay, yeah, the the offensive player has the right to try and draw a foul. But in a case where the defender's not jumping, Ja Moran was jumping almost parallel to, yeah. to KCP. He had room to land and everything. It just... Yeah, if if a guy is charging, so say there's a rotation, they swing the ball around, and the guy's coming from the paint, charging toward the corner, and he jumps at him, and he's flying toward him. That's one thing. He, he wasn't at all. He was not... John Morant was contesting the shot... And he was jumping on he it was parallel is the best way to explain it. KCP's in the corner and Ja Morant, his the way that he was flying was toward the baseline. Mm-hmm. It wasn't toward the three point line, toward the bench. It was toward the baseline. And so somebody just like the way that, you know, Zaza stuck his foot out, Kawhi landed on his foot, Warriors win, yada yada yada. That was awful. In the same token that that injury happened, the same way that that injury happened, you can get an injury in what KCP done last night. I'm not saying that he was being malicious and he was trying to take job. I'm not saying anything like that. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Ah. Shut up, Sam. I know. I'm kicking him out. No, I'm out this here. is going to be a solo cast after this. <laughs> Sam has been removed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man 
I hate you. I know. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> so I, I just I think that that's it's something that they need to take a look at. I think that if a defender is not lunging toward a player, that the defender should have the same right, the same landing space as what a shooter does. That's, oh yeah, that, I think that's a good way to put it. So that that's pretty much all we got on the on the game last night. You know, it, it was. I, I've talked about how great I felt like the, the Grizzlies played. There was there were a lot of positives from last night, even in a loss. A lot of things that you like to see. A lot of things that they done. That it, it's an improvement. Where we're going to take lumps as fans, Grizzlies fans. The Grizzlies are going to lose a lot of games this year. It's a young team, young coach. There, there's just going to be games where they get blown out. Yep. The Nuggets game. That was awful. The Warriors game. Uh, boo boo. There's going to be games where they just play bad. Mm-hmm. But last night wasn't one of those games. They mm-hmm. they played well. They played well enough to win. The team played well, yes. Yeah. But one thing, Jonas. You listen to this. I need you to do better. I need you to do better because last night you had 4.6 rebounds. No, 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 no. We need 2010. 20 and 16 is even better. <laughs> that's why I say 16 because that's how many rebounds I'm down right now. So, thank you. But So I knew mm-hmm. that he didn't have good numbers last night. Mm-hmm. I went back and I was looking because I'm like, man, he just he was not productive. Mm-mm. But he he he, shot he touched the ball three. like ten times. That was it, and he had six rebounds. So I mean, he didn't touch it much. Yeah, he he only shot the ball three times. Mm-hmm. He made, made two, two of those them. three shots. Mm-hmm. So he didn't shoot the ball bad. It's mm-hmm. not like he had an awful game. He just was. I just need him to do better. He was almost invisible, mm-hmm. really. You know, offensively, he hardly shot the ball at all. We've said it before. I think he is a walking double double. Oh yeah. He's had a couple of games here where he's had had a rough stretch here. But I think he turned that it happens. Around. Yeah. Well, he had those last year before he got traded and stuff. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. He he's gonna get the the playing time. Mm-hmm. He's gonna see the floor plenty. I think he's gonna be fine. I'm not hitting the panic button on that at nope. all. Not, not even either. close. Well, even if he does do bad, I'm not dropping you, dude. You're my guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to talk about one other thing, and this is not it's not Grizzlies related, not even close to being Grizzlies related, but it is basketball related. And this is something I've, I've kind of watched it a little bit. I tried to find a video to see exactly what happened. I couldn't find a video to see exactly what happened. I only saw the post game interview. Marcus smart. The Celtics were playing in Denver. He has a history of, I guess altercations with fans when he was in college, they were playing at Texas tech. Marcus smart goes into the crowd because that's what he does. That's he, he is a, he's a guy that gets in there and he hustles. He's a hustle guy, hard work all the time. So he's hustling out, trying to save a ball ends up in the stands and a fan from Texas tech is mouthing and says something, and Marcus Smart ends up shoving him. So he has a history of stuff with fans. But here's my issue with with the whole situation. The Smart in the interview, the post game interview, he says that the fan told him, I believe it was get on your knees. You need or, to stay on your knees because that's where you belong, or something similar yeah. to that. If you're an NBA fan and you're listening to this. And you do this to players, you're a freaking punk. This is the weakest move ever. These guys are grown men out here. We're paying for these tickets to go watch these guys play. You can trash talk a guy without crossing the line. You can trash talk somebody oh, yeah. without belittling them. Mm-hmm. Without I could not stand, still cannot stand Chandler Parsons as a basketball player. He's not that bad. I don't know him <laughs> as a person, but every single game that I went to, every single chance I got, which was not many because he stayed on the bench hurt 99% of the time, every chance I got to talk crap to that guy, I would let him have it. But there's a right and a wrong way to do it. 
I don't care how much money these guys are making. They're still grown men out there. They can't do anything in retaliation because if they do, they're getting disciplined by the league. Oh, yeah. Regardless of how much money they're making, you as a fan do not have the right to talk to these guys like that. So if you're a fan and you're doing that, just stop going to the games. We, you know, Trash talk they, at your house. Yeah. <laughs> watch the TV and you can drop whatever you want. You can call them anything that you want mm-hmm. to. But if you are at a game... If you're sitting floor side, if you're sitting in the tunnel, doesn't matter where you're sitting. Know where the line is. Look at it from the player's standpoint. If that was you and somebody is talking down to you, if somebody's belittling you, degrading you, are you going to sit there and take it? Absolutely not. I it's, wouldn't. No. I Go ahead and let the league find me because it's on like a potted neck bone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. Do not. Don't I, I don't care how much money I'm making. I don't care how much you paid for your seats. It does not give you the right to talk to them any way that you want to. Nope. So we as fans have to do a better job. If you're at a game and you hear somebody say something that's over the line, go tell a security guard. Mm-hmm. Get them out of there. Because real fans of the NBA are not going to talk to players like that because we have a respect for them. You can dislike somebody, the Chandler Parsons deal. Sam can tell you, mm-hmm. every single time he would come on the floor, I would boo as loud as I could. The whole time he was out there. Call him a dumpster fire, overpaid. Overpaid, that was a big one. Yeah, anything, like, I, I wouldn't, I talk trash. It's what I do. I do it all the time. It I, I do is. it at work. So I have no issues talking trash to players. Players expect that. They know it's a it's a rival. Like when they're coming into your house, they know that they're going to get the business. And it's okay to give them the business, but know where the line is. Marcus Smart is just one example. There's plenty of other examples that this has happened. And Russell Westbrook. I was about to mention that one. Yeah. Yep. That that was I believe it was the Sixers game. Uh, the there's one fan he was dogging him the whole game. There's there's videos out there if you guys look it up. Just type in Russell Westbrook fan altercations, you'll find it. But there was one he was dogging him the whole game, and finally Westbrook went in. Got he was driving in. I believe he got fouled. Gets pushed out of bounds. He's in front of the fan there. Well, the fan starts flipping him the bird, yelling profanities at him and stuff. And Westbrook's finally had enough of it. Dude's been dogging him the whole game. He goes over to the official. Hey, this guy keeps doing this. Is he allowed to? I mean, is he allowed to do that? And I can't do anything. And they threw him out. And that's what should be done. Absolutely. Yep. They they one hundred percent. If somebody crosses the line, season ticket holder, one time game, don't care. If you cross the line, you should get escorted out of the mm-hmm. arena. There, there's See another you later. one. There's another one that I remember now. Blake Griffin. Uh, the there was a fan at the Timberwolves game. I believe it was last year. Yes, because he was with the Pistons. Yes, the fan yelled at him a racial slur, and Blake turned around and said, "Excuse me, what did you say?" And the fan said it again. Well, security heard it, and they grabbed him and. Threw him out, and which should have happened. Yeah, maybe maybe a curb stomp was in order right well, there. Blake like, should have freaking RKO'd him out of nowhere <laughs> or something. Yeah, I, I have I have zero tolerance for that. So as NBA fans, step it up. J- yes. Just step it. If you're at a game, you hear somebody crossing the line, call them out on it. If you I would. If you don't want to, if you don't want to have like, okay, I'm not encouraging confrontation. I'm not that. But you can go to a security guard discreetly mm-hmm. and be like, hey, listen, this guy right up here, just cross the line. We have to protect ourselves as fans. We have to police this because Russell Westbrook hates Memphis. I've been to, Was I guess, six? six games where Russ has played in Memphis with, with his time at OKC, and now I've been to the Rockets game. And he doesn't come out and warm up in Memphis, and it's known he just doesn't he doesn't like it. I think mm-hmm. that he has had a lot of of time, uh, a lot of times in Memphis where he just 
you know, people have just been ignorant. And so he doesn't come out. And and I hate it because mm-hmm. I love Russell Westbrook. He's too. he's an easy guy to hate because of his attitude. But he's his, not getting it from me. His game's great. Yeah, he he's exciting on the floor. Mm-hmm. I love his killer mentality. It, Steven Adams is one of his best friends, but when they're on the on the floor playing against each other, there's no friends. Don't oh, talk no. to me. Nope. He he said that in an interview. He, he, I'm you know Steven Adams love him, but when we get in in between those lines, when the whistle blows, balls up in the air. There's no friends. It's me versus them. And I love that about Russ. So I, I want to see him out there. I want to see him warming up. And I hate that fans, NBA fans, have caused guys like that to not want to come out. And it, it's I, I don't want to see malice in the palace. I don't want to see players going in the stands fighting with people. I don't want to see fans fighting. Gosh, I don't want to see any I of that. I forgot about that. I want to go oh to a game and watch the guys that I paid to go see. Yep. That's what I want to do. And I don't want those guys to not want to play in the city that I'm at because people are idiots. Because that's just, if you're out there and you're talking to them, if you're talking to them and just an ignorant kind of way. You're just being an idiot. Just cut it out. We don't need it. We want to watch the players. The the, the fans of the game want to watch the superstars, and they don't want it to be a situation where we can't go watch some of our favorite players because you had too much to drink or because you think you can talk to somebody any type of way. Yep. And Mm. another thing on the Russell Westbrook, it's not just Russell. I've heard that OKC doesn't like Memphis in general. They don't like going. They don't like being there. I've been told that by a couple people, that they just don't like going. They've actually had, like, I don't know, like, not backstage pass. That's a concert. But they've had those, what are those passes called? Well, anyway, they can go yeah. back in the back. And that a lot of the OKC, like, back a few years ago, they, they wouldn't have anything to do with the Memphis fans. A lot of them wouldn't. And they, they just assumed that they just – well, fan altercations and whatnot, they just they don't like being there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I hate it, man. But it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's not I, just Russell. There's there's a lot of them. Yeah. And it's just it's it's a small example. Mm-hmm. And that's I remember last year Donovan Mitchell tweeting after something happened in Utah and he called out the fans. Donovan Mitchell is he said I and don't quote me because this isn't exact, but basically he was telling the fans in Utah that this is not what we do. This is not how you represent this franchise. You guys have to do better. Mm-hmm. What was that about? Man, I, I don't remember exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't. I, I could say because I don't I, remember that. I don't remember. But yeah, it was it, something happened. One of the fans said something to some. You know, it, it may have been Westbrook. It may have been because I remember. There was one game Russ was walking off the floor and there was a fan that was right down by the aisle and he leaned in toward Westbrook and you couldn't tell what he was saying because the camera angle was like from the side of the guy's face. It was a okay. profile. And Russ was walking and he stopped and turned around and he Russ said something back. Couldn't tell what Russ said. But then Russ turned to a security guard. Don't know what happened with it from there. It may have been that situation. I don't know for sure. Um, you know, I just remember seeing Donovan Mitchell tweet out, mm-hmm. calling the fans out, saying, "Hey, this is this is not what we do. You know, we 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 show respect, we show love to the guys that that play the game." So, well, that's all we got for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll go over uh, Twitter, Sam. What's your Twitter handle? Where can My we get you, man? Twitter is uh, Sammy B eleven eighteen. That is a capital S, lowercase a m m y, capital B one 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 eight. And I am at D Will twenty one eleven. You can find the show at Hootball Grizz. Got it right the first time. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Hootball Grizz. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, go Grizz. Go Grizz. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.